Software testing is a method to check if whether the actual software matches the expected requirements. It also ensures that it's defect-free, that it responds correctly to all kinds of inputs, that it performs its functions within an acceptable time, that it runs properly on the intended environment, and that it's usable. But beyond that, testing can also be used as a framework for software development. With a bit of research, you'll easily find dozens of testing techniques and software development processes, but today we'll be focusing on one called test-driven development based on unit testing. I'm Raz and you're watching Explain It to a Duck. Let me first define what unit testing is. Simply put, unit testing is a way of testing the smallest piece of code that can be logically isolated within a system. In other words, it means testing a specific function that doesn't rely or connect to external dependencies such as databases, the file system, or HTTP services. Like for example, a function that takes two numbers and returns their sum in a calculator program. Keep in mind that the goal of this testing technique is purely to test code logic and nothing else. If you're kind of new to programming, your instincts should be telling you that the best and fastest way to develop software is first to code it, then to test it, and finally to fix it. Well, in theory, there's nothing wrong with that for as long as the project is quite small and you're the only one working on it. But let's imagine for a moment that your project evolves into a product and you end up hiring a whole team of engineers to help you out with it. As your code base grows bigger over time, the complexity of the product too which usually implies that bugs start to appear, adding features becomes tricky, new members of your team have a hard time understanding the code, and ultimately the velocity of your team drops. At this point, you realize that the code test fix approach doesn't work so well anymore, and your team has now to come up with a new way of improving code readability, solidity, and flexibility. Well, lucky you, that's exactly what test-driven development is aiming to solve. Test-driven development is a test-first approach that takes software development the other way around. It relies on product requirements being first converted into test cases even before the software is developed. As it turns out, writing tests before the functionalities codes ensure a better understanding of the product, the effectiveness of the code, and a continual focus on quality. Now, this method is in essence very simple and works in three stages, red, green, and refactor. First, we write a new test that matches the feature specifications based on use cases and user stories. Then, we run the test cases and witness that the new test fails because the feature hasn't been implemented yet. Second, we write the simplest code possible to make the new test pass, which doesn't need to be elegant or easy to understand, it just needs to work. Then, we run all the test cases, this time making sure that they all successfully pass. And finally, if needed, we refactor the code we just wrote without forgetting to rerun all the test cases one last time to certify that nothing was broken in the process. As we've seen, the implementation of this pattern is fairly easy and straightforward, but there's still a few things to keep in mind when it comes to writing tests. The first and most obvious thing being that tests should be fast. If they're slow, developers won't run them, so we really need to keep them as small as possible. The second thing is they should be readable, because they act as the best form of documentation since they never go out of sync with the code they actually document. For that, it's recommended to use BDD-style test cases in the form of giving when then, preferably only one logical assertion per method, and try to avoid at all costs using magic values. The third thing is tests should be deterministic. Deterministic is a fancy word to say that no matter how many times we run the test cases, they should always behave the same way if the underlying code has not changed. Otherwise, developers simply won't trust them. And this is the reason why test cases should never depend on other test cases, on environmental values such as the current time they're likely to change, or APIs the file system or databases they're likely to fail. And the last thing is they should follow the same naming convention. BDD, again, has a very elegant way of saying this. For example, it should return true if x is bigger than 0, or it should throw an error if y is inferior to 0. And that wraps it up for today, guys. Feel free to share, like, and comment this video if you find this content useful, and see you in a week for another video of Explain It to a Duck. Cheers!